Welcome to Electron Line. Now we've reached our final step of the first round in the Kalman filter process. We have now determined the new state matrix and we've determined the new process covariance matrix. We're going to use those now to start round two. So the one that's current becomes the previous value for the new round. Here the one that's current becomes the previous value of the new round. In other words, this is now going to be replacing this value right in there and this is going to be replacing that matrix right in there. So that's how we then start the second round. Notice the values that we've obtained. The observed position was 4260. The Kalman filter gives us a value of 4272.5, so a little bit greater than the measured value. The reason for that is because the predicted value based upon the previous estimate for the position or the previous known value for the position and the velocity would expect to find it at 4280. The measurement was at 4260 and the Kalman filter puts that as 4272. So that shows you how the Kalman filter adjusts the observed value to marry it up or to compare it to the predicted value to give us the best and probably the most accurate value for the position of the object that we're tracking. In this case, we're tracking an airplane. So now let's go ahead and start round two. Now we'll do round three. You can see how this continues to progress through the calculations. We'll start going, doing it a little bit faster and faster so you can really follow and see how the Kalman filter process works in this 2D example. Then later on, we'll show you more complicated examples where more variables that we're keeping track of and also we'll start introducing some of the errors that we see in the actual processing part itself. So first, the simple 2D example, Go on to round two now. In the next video, we'll start on that.